moving on, we have this. I want to feature and talk about a little bit briefly. This is uh, the Hundreds Winter 2022 collection. And I just wanted to mention it only because, you know, I talk sometimes a lot about people and maybe brands and stuff that I maybe don't like, especially if I've had a bad experience with people that actually run them. But when it comes to stuff like the hundreds, I think this is a really good story, especially for kids who are coming up trying to make their own thing of an example of a brand who just stayed the course, did their own thing, keep their, kept their head down, didn't try and chase clout or chase cool and have been slowly but surely just churning along doing things. And this is one of the brands I kind of first discovered when I first got into streetwear, you know, when I was into flipping Diamond Supply, Fresh Drive, Fresh Jive, sorry, um, Crooks and Castles and all these type of things. Hundreds was in the same sort of kind of time area that I was kind of you know into those kind of brands and Bobby Hundreds was also the first person I met from the scene um in that era too legitimately because back then I had like a you know a semi-popular blog that people used to read called Stop Begging and I used to kind of feature some some stuff that I was into similar to what I'm doing in the podcast I'd feature some streetwear brands and maybe talk about stuff that I'd like to buy and whatever and I was pretty active on the Hypebeast forums also which Bobby used to post on um back in the day and the first time I met Bobby Hundreds was actually an interesting time because I think it was around the time when I was having some issues with some people in the scene in London in general because everyone was kind of acting very big time-ish and I also probably didn't help things because I also wasn't somebody that would you know take the little bro thing well I didn't really acquiesce that well I didn't want to pay my dues or somebody annoyingly told me many 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 years ago I wasn't really into that sort of vibe because I was kind of you know looking at people like Hiroshi Fujiwara and James Jebbier as my sort of kind of icons and people that I was kind of trying to follow in their footsteps and I don't think they ever paid their vibes they just went out and did cool shit and people basically followed them um, so this idea that you had to pay your vibes or sorry uh, pay your dues and sort of like you know lick the asses of people who just threw parties or who were just around and stuff was just really annoying so I really had an issue with some of that stuff going on again some of it was my own fault some of it was other people's fault maybe 50 50 maybe it was more of my fault who knows so to kind of find or to kind of, you know, meet somebody like a Bobby Hundreds in real life and, you know, walk around the shops with him and see how people treated him and see how differently people treated me when they saw me with him was a real big eye opener. And, you know, for me in general, I always say when it comes to those perfect people, especially prominent people, it's not hard to have a fan for life like i might not be a fan of the clothing like i haven't worn the hundreds in many years the last time i purchased the hundreds must have been maybe more than 10 years ago i have to definitely say that but i'm always going to be a fan of bobby and ben hundreds because of how well they treated me and how well they came across they were really nice kind just cool guys and i never and it kind of reaffirmed to me that the idea that I had about, you know, looking up to the actual people who were operating and shipping stuff as opposed to the people who were just, you know, in it to be the marketing assistant and whatnot and do the social media was definitely a better way to go. And it also solidified in my brain that for some reason, I don't know why it is, the the person who actually runs the shop or runs the show is usually way more cool and way more chill than the person who works at the store on a weekend or the person who knows a person who knows a person who knows that person. It's always like that. I'm not sure what the case is because all the issues I had with people in London were definitely from people who were kind of, I won't say hangers on, but they were the ones who were just basically supporting the person doing the genius work. They weren't the actual operators of it. Very rarely did I meet operators who were wankers. The only time I did was maybe the palace guy and stuff, but that was a long time ago. He maybe had an attitude because, you know, of where he come. I don't know, whatever. But those people, that, that's the only person who I met who was legitimately someone that I definitely wasn't a fan of as a person, but maybe they've changed. But everyone else who was a cunt was mostly people who were working on the periphery or on the outside. So to meet someone like Bobby Hundreds at a time who was, I think, really, really well known back then, probably even more so now, especially after the band blew up and the books and the interviews and documentaries were good stuff. It was really a big eye opener and kind of reaffirmed to me, OK, cool. This is who I need to kind of look at as a kind of as a, as Brendan Shaw would say, as a North Star. <laughs> but yeah, it's just cool to see them still doing it. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Like Winter 22 collection, they're still out there pushing products. And I think at the time when they were coming up, there was a lot of kind of comparison to Supreme. And maybe Supreme was way more refined and a lot more, you know, and a lot more experience and had a lot more know-how and just had a lot more maybe street cred and whatnot. And people kind of looked at it differently when it came to hundreds. Maybe hundreds looked a little bit slapstick, a little bit cringe, especially the association with the Filipino community for some reason, really, I think, like hurt their cool points. Uh, and, you know, for whatever reason, who knows? But I just like the fact that they just continue doing what they're doing. And eventually the world, I won't say the world caught up, but the world sort of adjusted and sort of realized hey 
you they can coexist you can have a supreme and the hundreds but it doesn't mean because hundreds the supreme exist the hundreds don't need to exist because it's not as good they can both exist and kind of um you know appeal to whatever audience they want to appeal to and i think now looking at it it just looks way more refined and well more put together than it ever did in the past when i used to wear it and again that makes sense because they were just maybe starting they were figuring it out on the go but look wise you know if you if someone told you this was the hundreds you would never know it was you know especially just if you want if you didn't see the title or anything you just kind of saw the clothing you'd think that just looked like any other cool well put together brand right they've got this uh flannel over shirt thing it looks pretty thick with a hood on it a nice long sleeve t-shirt some combat pants and okay he's wearing air force ones just a really clean and easy put together look again you wouldn't think it was overtly a hundreds type of thing i do like this long sleeve here with this wave logo on the side oh it's a chain link that's pretty nice that graphic with the h is fucking banging I'm assuming that's a done from scratch as well. That looks really, really good. So yeah, nice look book. Great clothing as per usual. Nice selection of teeth. That jersey is banging. Oof. I like that. Wow. There's a jersey here with um in black and white, written with O3. I think that may be is it the year they launched? Maybe they may yeah, they launch with the hundreds on the back here written. And I also like that this is a tiny detail, but I've always liked the fact that there's no space between the and the hundreds. That it's all kind of one word, but you read it how you're meant to read it, right? The hundreds. I think that's always pretty cool. The S here looks like it's floating a bit. Maybe I'm kind of seeing things, but I like that. I really do like that. The white mesh, it looks like. Is it white mesh or maybe it's not white? Maybe it's, just, maybe it's not actually a mesh. It's just a t-shirt, it looks like. But it looks pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. And the thing I was mentioning too, I was thinking about it, is that, you know what's interesting about the hundreds? I think way more people out there um, are probably on the way or trajectory to end up like a hundred than they are supreme i think supreme is a is the kind of what do you call it supreme is a unicorn right they're the one-off one but a lot of people think they can emulate that or copy their success but you're probably not going to you're probably going to end up being more similar to a hundreds and even a hundreds isn't something easy to emulate because they've survived and they've kind of thrived in this industry for many many years loads of politics behind the scenes and they've always managed to kind of come out on the other side so it clearly shows that they know what they're doing as business operators they know what they're doing as professionals as a brand as humans and stuff but it just kind of works out all together um i really do like it and maybe it's just a perfect marriage because it's always been bobby and ben hundreds you know on paper one guy handling the creative and one guy handling all the money stuff it just makes it easy to just keep churning it out and just keep turning up and putting out product because one person handles the creative side and one person handles the money side there's no kind of um you know blurring of the lines or messiness involved um, but yeah, I like I like all of it. That jersey is really one of my favorite pieces in there. Nice shirt as well. It comes in red and red and black, which kind of looks a bit similar to the Angolan flag. Actually, this this colorway looks a little bit similar to the Angolan flag. Very very very. It's gi it's given Angola to be honest, but I'm guessing they want no a nice little what's that? We call that zip up hoodie um, with the hundreds written on the back of it also. Maybe this is stuff I'm not really a fan of. This kind of stuff plots on the front of this. I think it's a little bit corny. It reminds me of your yo, yo, It reminds me of a uh, One Six and Park or something. That's what it looks like. One Six and Park outfit. So I'm not really too down with that. But I like this. Whatever those is that Digi Camo is that tie dye. They have got these tie dye combats that look like they've been made in sweat material. This lovely fleece type thing is pretty cool as well. But maybe the model actually makes it cool because she comes across cool herself. Um, they've got a back of this quilted. I guess it's the same jacket she's wearing, right? The back of this one the back of this weird oh no it's not the back maybe it's maybe it's inside out maybe maybe that's what i'm, I'm looking at inside out inside is a fleece and then maybe the outside has got this kind of uh what do you call it um this yellow logo is that a chinese dragon or chinese i don't know what that what that kind of style is but you know what i mean at the back of it and then you've got another picture here with the green jacket which i'm not a fan like i said it's giving one of six and park it's giving rusky and whatever that her girl's name in the other guy who's presenting with her on there um but yeah um big up the hundreds for being consistent big up the hundreds for stepping up for showing up all the time and shipping and just being absolute gents of a human because you know it doesn't take much to have a fa to have a fan for life and they've got a fan for life in me just because of the strength of that one brief interaction we had back in the day when i used to fucking intern for 12 bar so big up the hundreds